Hello there everybody, this is Graham, also known as Collector75. Welcome to another Transformers Masterpiece KO review. Um, this is one I picked up about a week or so ago. Um, I did actually want to do the video then, but um, I contracted a nasty bloody um, sore throat and it's really affected my voice, as you can probably tell, because it sounds a bit rough at the moment. Um, so yeah, so obviously I'm doing this sort of like now, really. Um, Again, this is one that um, occasionally I do a search on eBay just for a Masterpiece KO Thundercracker because I cannot afford um, the decent um, r real one. Um, and obviously they knocked off, they did a, like a KO Masterpiece Skywarp not so long ago. So I thought it's only inevitable um, that they're going to do this one. So I did an idle search a few weeks ago and I found one. And it was quite reasonably priced for a KO, about 50 odd, 60 quid, something like that. <laughs> um, so yes, so I, I, I got it and um, I was hoping it would be the same sort of quality as the Skywarp one, the BBQ one, whatever that was called. Um, this one isn't as good as that one. It is, um, as you'd expect, a more common KO version, but it's still pretty good. Now the box it did come in, uh, normally some of these, I'm going to show you this bit, um, normally some of the box it come does say that to Takara Tony. This one does say Takara Tony, so it is a proper rip-off of the box. Um, it was a bit banged up as well. Um, I'm going to put this in the background, actually. Um, yes, yeah, so it was a bit banged up, as you'd expect with some of those knockoff boxes, but I'm going to put that over there. But it is a full representation of the box. Um, you know, so you can't go wrong on that respect. Um, do get the instructions. <clears throat> I lent it on uh, something else over here. So there we go. <coughs> Aren't we? Um, so you get a full rip off of the instructions and everything that goes with it. Um, there we go. So that's the instruction. I'm going to put those over there. You get his little masterpiece collector card. Um, you know, all pretty well done. And then you do get this as well. I um, have no idea whether this is the included in the original one or not. Um, I haven't even got a clue where it goes. Maybe in the cockpit. I don't know. don't know why you'd want to do it, but there. It did come with it. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, so let's get on to the figure itself. Now, it's actually not too bad. It has a few faults here and there. But overall, it is a pretty damn good KO Masterpiece Thundercracker. Now, obviously, it is based on the MP10 or the MP11. MP11, isn't it? Um, Starscream mold. Um, so it looks a lot better. Um, now and then I do have a bit of a problem with these thrusters at the back, they don't really want to move around too much. Um, some of the plastic quality uh, just there, it looks a bit bit, bit tatty around those bits there, I don't know if it's going to zoom in too well. Um, yeah, some of the joints, especially in robot mode, are a little loose, but on the whole it holds together pretty damn well. Um, it does have all the usual features, I'm going to put that landing gear away now. Um, that was a bit of a pain in the ass to get out, if I'm honest. So now it's no surprise that it doesn't want to go back in. There we go, it sort of got caught on one of the wheels. So anyway, you're going to tuck that in there, put that in there, ready for transformation. It does have the wheels on the bottom, we're going to put those away now, get that ready. And now, <clears throat> I did have a problem with these um, attachments folding onto the actual main guns. Uh, they're on these funny ball joints, and I don't think they've done the ball joints co completely correctly. Um, it sort of doesn't really want to turn that well and I didn't want to force it too much so I sort of stuck them there and you can just stick the guns in now it doesn't come with the missiles um, that some of the others do um, whether the original one did or not I can't really remember or tell you what I'm going to do for transformation I'm going to take this bloody weapon out of here there we go and we'll put them on at the end Right, okay, so that is pretty much him ready, and I just love the look of these F-15 Strike Eagles. I love them. I, 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 it's one of my favourite ever aircraft, mainly thanks to Transformers. Um, like I said, if if you've ever had, um, I think I can't remember what issue it was, probably two or three of the American comic, where it just opened up the cover and you've got like Thundercracker, Starscream in the middle and Skywalk over here or something and they're all flying along in formation and it just looks good I love that, they're one of those iconic images that I have of my earliest recollections of Transformers and I loved it um, yeah um, I was going to say something about the Decepticon logos whether they're actually been put on totally straight 
on those wings? I don't know. <laughs> they look a little off to me. But I don't know. It don't matter. Um, some of the dodgy paint applications there. It does look like it was painted by me, to be honest. Um, you know, um, it's all right. It ain't too bad. It does the job that I want it to. Um, a little sloppy finishing on that joint there. Um, but, you know, overall, it, it's all right. It does the job. Right, let's go on to transforming them. Right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to extend these legs backwards. If I can get them to come back. They probably don't want to bloody come now, do they? Uh, they went in easy enough, but they don't want to certainly come out. All right, let's... Uh, try doing them one at a time um, actually let's do some of the easy stuff first let's fold these little wing bits in and get them just tuck them out of the way because they're quite easy to do um, fold these up like so without them popping off and then we're going to try disconnecting them there and then let's see if I can do one at a time oh there we go these aren't the greatest leg joints if I'm honest with you and it does feel like they want to snap a lot of the time um, but we'll come to that a bit later. We're going to open up these air vents. Um, you still do get the sort of like the detail of the engine inside, but it's it's um, it's all right. I think it could have been done with being painted, <coughs> like on some of the early releases of the MP11. Maybe even one before that, you did used to get it a bit painted up. But it was great how they added that as a feature of like a hill spur for this MP11. Um, right, so you're going to do that down here. Come around to the front. And then you're just going to rotate this around, don't you? Yep, there we go. Bring that around. Take that off of here. Bring that down and rotate it around, giving him his things. And then you can just sort of use that as a central hill spur, if you want to call it that. Then you come around to the front of the aircraft. You're going to open up these once you disconnect it right because it's also pegged in on that little peg just in there which can be annoying um, and then from here <coughs> oh me, uh, you've just got to start wiggling things all loose um, I think this one's got to come out this one can be a bit problematic there's a bit of a pain to get in if I'm honest you need your, if you've got fingernails you need to get them in and then rotate that up um, then you can, there's a little tab in here, it's quite a novel little tab, I like these little tabs. You need to get these out, if you have fingernails like I do have, right? well, I was always complaining that I've got fingernails, um, but yeah, hand, handy for things like this. Uh, so you can fold them up and get them out of the way. Then we are going to come around here and then you can start getting these bloody arms out of the way. Right, so I've just got to remember how to do it right, let's keep those arms around there for a the minute. I think we, what do we do, oh, that's it, let me uh, rotate them out from here, like so, without breaking it, um, and then we're going to get this central thing here, and this moves all the way down, oh, it's a pain in the bloody ass to say that, especially when you can't remember how to bloody do it, or is it this way it comes out, it comes out one bloody way, I don't know. Oh, there we go. Right, let's try to turn it around. There we go. There we go. It's because it's a KO. I'm afraid of breaking some of the joints. Because some of them are a bit loose. Others are a bit tight. Oh, why isn't that moving? Oh, maybe it does come around that way. It's a bloody pain in the ass, this joint. Oh, no, it's not there. Oh, there we go. Well, I've got it moving. There we go. Maybe it does come out round this way. There you go. If you know me and my, some of my videos, you've just got to persevere with it, really. Get down here, bugger. Right. Now, the one main problem that I do have with this figure is here. It's a bit loose on this joint here, right here. It's this little rivet right in there. It doesn't look like it's been riveted in enough. You can see it just moving... You can see it just moving in there. Feels like that just needs to be <coughs> just a little tighter where it was riveted together just to give it a more solid uh, feel. Anyway, right, so now we are almost ready to start doing this nose comb. We're going to just 
open it out pretty much like the old G1 actually and we just open that up as well and we fold that inside and close that back up now this should give us enough clearance now once we open that up we're going to bring the cockpit through I think is that how we do it how do we do this do you know what I can't actually remember it's been so long since I've done one of these I think it's because I haven't got the head in exactly the right position it's a bit of a pain of bloody ass. right that's why he's little weird things are on springs on his head to get it through that gap and now I haven't forgot to get that through there right here we go so it ends up being a bit of a bloody mishmash until you get it all in the right position then you can just start tidying certain bits up like that you can fold that into position now bring it round and now we're going to just move my camera up there we go right so we've got the legs all done <coughs> and then you end up with him in this sort of state and then what you've got to do is finally bring this all down and it oh yeah, you've got to bring these arms down that always helps if you can see that and then this should now start to slide down hopefully providing that I've got it all in the right bloody spots probably don't but there we go Right, so they're going to come up. These are his arms. Let's get his arms a little bit more out of the way, like that. They're going to rotate these around. They're going to come up and rotate around. Something like that, anyway. They're going to do something. We'll do something with them in a minute. Like I say, it's a bloody pain in the arse, these. Right, so we've got his wings out of the way, right. And it is just a case of getting all this down and into position right so we got it all down come around to the back here open this up now there is a joint which when you do it right there's a joint just in here that you're supposed to line up <coughs> oh, so when you bring it all down it's supposed to tab in there but being a KO this probably won't want to do it properly but that's where it goes, just in there. I've got it sort of in there. Right, so then you redo all this. Da -da. Yeah, I had to cheat, unfortunately, because it was just being a, such a pain. Um, right, so I figured out what I was doing wrong. I forgot, on the um, the back, if I just spin him around quickly, on the back, you had to push this nose cone in, and that's why I couldn't get this connected, and then that was stopping me connecting all the wings up and everything. But once you persevere with it, and you tab these in properly and everything, and get everything where it's supposed to be going um it's actually not too bad now as i said before about this main joint now it does mean that you can see that in here if i bring them a bit closer you can see that it, it does have a bit of a wobble there which should be a bit more uh firmer for some reason and i do find that on my um masterpiece skywarp this bit sits a lot more under there for some reason but i just cannot get this to go down any more than it currently is at so I have no idea why this one doesn't want to get that look. But what I do is you can, the legs are pretty loose on this one, so you can get some good poses and you can get around that and it don't look too bad like that. <coughs> um, so it is pretty good. Like I said, you've got all the usual articulation. You can, have you got these? The only thing I haven't checked is yes, so you can open those up and he does have the usual uh, breast missiles, whatever you want to call them. Um, and he's all right. I love the face sculpt. I think it's actually a very good addition. If I just bring the Skywarp, I don't have Starscream out, unfortunately, so I've only got Skywarp. This is the other KO Skywarp that I've got. <coughs> um, he is hunched over because um, I do have him on a shelf looking down. Um, but this is a very good. This is a very good KO. This one is all right. It's not as good, but. It, um, it does the job for what I need it to do. Um, and that is just look the part. Um, yeah, I actually think um, it's pretty cool. Uh, I think you can extend these... F it's these joints in here that are a bit loose just in here. Which means that he sometimes looks like he's, he's got shorter legs than he actually has. So you've just got to remember that when you're posing him. Um, but other than that, I think he looks pretty damn cool. I really do like this uh, Masterpiece MP11 mould. Um, 
Right, there you go. Oh, you got watch the fingers as well. They're definitely liable for popping off. <coughs> oh, uh, right, okay, so this has been Graham with um, Masterpiece Thundercracker, the KO version. Um, as I said, if you want a cheaper alternative to buying um, the very expensive, either the Toys R Us version or the Takara one, um, both out of my price range at the moment, so that's why I went with this one. Um, and it does the job. Still, there we go. Um, for better or worse, it's there. Uh, right, this is Graham, the Collector 75. I'll see you all next time. Bye for now.